So today we're going to talk about my diesel engine preheater. So how I found out about these is through the trucking industry, they use them out here to basically preheat the engines on semi trucks or equipment when it's really cold outside rather than leaving the equipment idling all day. Because if you were out in the bush and the engine's cold and it's minus 40, it's not starting. So what people would do is put one of these diesel engine preheaters on and the vehicle will start in minus 40 after the heater heats everything up. I'll show you how it works. This here is the diesel engine preheater. How it works is the coolant is pulled from the engine block by this water pump here into the preheater and then into the heater core that then goes back into your engine block and basically it just cycles through the whole time and that's how it heats the coolant so then your engine block is completely warm when you leave. And you might be asking, Kevin, why not just use a block heater and plug it into your battery bank? Well, that's a great idea. But you need a massive battery bank or a generator to do that, if or basically shore power. So instead, with this, it runs off diesel. The truck also runs off diesel. That unit right there is your fuel pump. Looks familiar if you've ever owned a Chinese diesel heater. Now I do have this unit uh, tapped into my fuel tank, so so long as I have fuel in the truck, this thing will run. Being said, this heater does have some limitations. It is a Chinese version, and I bought it hoping that it would work as good as a Webasto or a Eberspatcher. Don't even try to say that word one of the German diesel heaters. And it does work really good. The controller has no timer and you do have to get up and start it. And then in about 45 minutes, it'll heat the engine. But I found that at about, once you get past about minus 30, it's iffy if it's going to work. Now, my workaround for that is I'm probably going to actually hook the power for it up to my batteries for the camper. And then what I'll do is when I park the truck at night, I'll just set this to its lowest setting and then just have it run all night so it can continue to keep the engine warm all night. This will work better than a block heater as your heater, your, all your coolant will already be warm and you will be able to have instantaneous heat coming out of your vents when you start the vehicle, not like when you have it plugged in and you go to start it and you don't have instantaneous heat. So these are your levels on it. As you can see, the coolant's at 66 degrees Celsius. So level six, level five, level four, level three, level two, level one. It goes all the way up to level nine. And there is no instruction manual with this when you buy them. I'm just telling you that now. Okay. Um, that's the outside or the interior temperature. So the controller temperature is 17 degrees Celsius, I believe. I, like I said, like you don't know like half this stuff. I don't even know. I believe this is the cabin temperature right now. Um, that's the levels. That's your voltage. That's the coolant temperature right now. So 66 degrees Celsius, which is pretty close to what I would actually like get it up to is like uh, 65 degrees Celsius. If it gets to there, then it's starting without even starting up the grid heater. So I don't mind that. You can set it so it gets up to, to 95 degrees Celsius. And uh, yeah. So, should you buy one of these? I'm going to tell you the price I paid for this. I'm going to tell you the price of an of a Webasto. A 
This Chinese one, I had to look, had to basically wait three weeks to get it off of AliExpress. You can get them off Amazon, but you're going to pay more. And I paid $300 for it shipped to my door. The Webasto is going to cost you about the range of, I'd say about a thousand to two thousand dollars in that range. The two thousand is really high. The not the one thousand is really low. So you'll probably pay around the fifteen hundred dollar mark and maybe even install. And honestly, for how well a Webasto is going to work and fact that you can actually rely on a Webasto to work when it's that cold, I would say go with the Webasto over this. Now, if you're someone like me and you're really cheap, yes, this is going to work, but make sure you have a backup plan, a little generator or something so you can at least plug in if this doesn't work and then you can at least get out of there because... Yeah, I went through some stuff with this one and I I really relied on it. I relied on it way too much that day. And uh, yeah, it ended up biting me. So uh, if you want to watch that video, that's my minus 40 and everything goes wrong. <laughs> Other than that, this does work great. Um, what did go wrong with it is I believe the little water pump on it doesn't like to work at that temperature so basically it just uh the coolant sits inside the casing for the heater and then the heater thinks that it's getting the coolant heated up throughout the entire engine but the pump's actually not going so the coolant gets up to temperature in the heater but not in the engine so it just basically yeah it wasn't giving me a code or anything it just basically didn't work uh the so I don't know if I need to change the pump on it or something, but I think uh, my idea that uh, basically just leaving it run all night is your other option for it. It uses nothing for fuel. It'll probably use maybe like, I don't know, running on low like that, probably like two liters of fuel. So you could, you could get away with doing this. I mean, $300 is a lot nicer than $1,500, right? So it's up to you. Um, I will not be leaving a link or anything for one of these Chinese ones. I don't want to be responsible for recommending a product that's uh, not the greatest. But uh, if you do want to try it, just know they do have their issues. But I haven't had one single issue with it up to about minus 30 degrees Celsius. If that says anything, and I will not be replacing this with a Webasto. I'm just going to keep using it until it gets to the point it doesn't work anymore or something. But uh, that's my own stupidity, right? <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically it. Um, there's not much else to it. They're pretty simple, and uh, I do recommend plumbing it to your tank. That makes life a lot easier than having to fill two tanks with them. And these also do work as like, I've seen people do it like uh, using it as like a hydronic uh, heating system for like in-floor heat for a van or something. And I've seen that too. It's like, that's pretty freaking cool. Um, and if you wanted to do that, it would be a lot of effort. And I would say just put a normal diesel heater in, but um, more power to you if you want to be creative, right? <laughs> But all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one later.